Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my Accounts Payable series. So if you have not watched parts one or two, well, parts one and two, go watch both of those and then come on back. All right, we've got our payees set up. We've got our payment page here, our bills that are due page, right? Let's take a moment to work on this form a little bit. First thing I want to do is a button over here to open up that guy. So again, you can use the wizards. I prefer using VBA, but since I promised I was going to try to use as little VBA as possible for the expert users, we're going to go into form design, find a button, drop it down here, form operations, open a form, our bill F, uh, open the form and show all records. We'll call this uh, payables next and give it a name, payables button and finish. And there we go. And that actually I think is faster with VBA. <laughs> all right, save it, close it, open it, click it. There we go. And later on when we do get to a little VBA at the end of the series, I'm going to show you how you can open this form and show just the stuff that's due soon, hide the stuff that's paid, filter it, all kinds of stuff. We'll get to it. Now, one thing I'd like to do is put a little bit of conditional formatting on here because nothing is worse than being surprised by a bill that's due in three days and you didn't realize it. <laughs> this usually happens to me around the start of the month. Like something might be due on 7-3 and it's currently 6-29. And I don't realize, oh, crap, that's due in a couple days. So let's put some conditional formatting on here. Let's make this one due in a couple days. Let's see, today is the 11th. Let's make this one due on the 15th. And this one's good due on the 7th, or on the 2nd. Okay, so design view, click on due date, format, conditional formatting. If you've never done any conditional formatting before, by the way, go watch this video. This stuff's really powerful. You can do a lot with conditional formatting. And in a few minutes, we're going to use an advanced form of conditional formatting called expression is you'll see that in just a few minutes. Here's two videos. I'll put links to these down below if you want to learn about these in more detail. All right. So let's just say if the due date is within seven days, I want to see it red, right? So new rule with a field value is let's say less than. So today's date is date with an open and closed parenthesis. That's important to include in here so that access knows it's the date function and not some value or the text date. Okay, so you need that open and close parentheses plus seven. So the date is less than seven days from now. Okay, we'll set the format as red with white foreground and bold. Hit okay and let's do a second one. New rule, same thing. Value is less than date, open close parentheses plus 30. And now we'll go yellow, just a yellow background. All right, it's due within a month. It's coming up. It's not due immediately. All right, save it, close it, open it. Where's my button? Payables. And look at that. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay, simple conditional formatting. Now, once I pay this bill, all right, let's say I pay it today. All right, I don't want it to still show up as a red. It'd be nice if that conditional formatting went away when it's marked paid. Okay, so to do that, we have to reference a different field. So we can't just use the field value is we have to use an expression. So again, click on due date, go to format, conditional formatting. Let's delete these two rules, delete, delete, add a new rule. This time we have to go expression is and put our expression in here. Now, what's the expression going to be? Take a moment, see if you can figure it out yourself. Pause the video and then come back. Okay, here's what I came up with. You ready? We're going to start with is null, paid date, and due date is less than date, open close parentheses, plus seven. Right? Paid date's got to be null or empty, and the due date is less than seven days in the future. All right, set your colors, make it bold, hit OK. Let's just test this one, right? Okay, save it, close it, open it. All right, make sure that's null. And wait a minute, 
I'm not getting any colors. What's going on here? Let's take a look and see. This is one of my pet peeves with access, by the way. It's been on my, my pet peeve list for years. Let's go back into here. And look what happened. Can you see it? You see what change access made? This has been on my list for the access team to fix for years, and it still oh, it bothers me. Notice what it did. Access put quotes around our field names, so now it's being treated as an actual text string. And I always teach in my beginner lessons that if you don't use spaces in your field names, you don't got to worry about putting brackets around everything. This is one of the exceptions, and it drives me nuts. All right, so come in here now and get rid of these quotes and put square brackets around the field name. So pay date, square brackets there, and then due date, square brackets around that. All right, now let's hit OK. Hit OK. Save it, close it, open it, and there's my color. All right, we'll do the same thing for the yellow now. So open this guy back up, format, conditional formatting. I'm going to open this guy and just copy this to the clipboard, right? Control C. And then we'll add a new rule. Expression is paste that in there, change that seven to a 30, drop that down, go with the yellow, hit OK, hit OK, save it, close it, open it. Beautiful. And as soon as one of these gets paid, that color should go away. And I got to fix my tab order. Here, form design, tab order, auto, and I see I got a combo 68. I hate that. Hit OK. This should be open this guy up. Go to all, change this to payee combo. Combos like the snack. There we go. Looking good. And again, one of the things I'm going to teach you a little bit later on when we get to the VBA lessons is how when we open up this bill form, we're gonna have it start by not showing stuff that's paid. And you can click a button down here that says show me everything. Because normally when you open this up, you just wanna see what's coming due, right? And if you know your formatting, if you know your, um, not your formatting, if you know your filtering and stuff, you can do that without any coding. Or you can come in here and say, okay, I just wanna see the stuff that's not paid, right click here and go equals blank. And there you go. But that's just more clicks every time you open the form. It'd be nice to have the form show up the way you want it, right? Same thing with sorting. You want to sort it by the due date, right? Right click and then sort newest to oldest, for example. I'll show you the most recent stuff up top. And then also add a filter. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. You can click, make these headers so you can click on the header buttons and it will sort based on that row. I got separate videos on that. There's all kinds of stuff you can do once you learn a little bit of VBA. Let's do one more thing in today's lesson. How about on the home screen here on the main menu, let's put how much is coming due within the next 30 days. That's always a, a helpful metric to see on your main menu, right? I got so many bills due. I used to always do this before. So I knew, you know, I got $1,000 coming up in the next week. I got to panic, right? <laughs> Design view. For this, we're going to use the dsum function. dsum is a close cousin of dlookup. It lets you look up a value in a table or query. Well, this, this lets us sum up a value based on a table or query with a little criteria. All right, let's take a look at our bill table in here. What we want to do is sum up the amount due where the pay date is null and the due date is less than 30 days in the future or seven or whatever you want it to be. All right, so let's go over here and we'll just make ourselves a little box here. In fact, I'm going to just shrink this up a little bit. We don't need this so much. We'll use it later maybe. I'm going to copy and paste this guy, copy, paste. All right, and we'll put in here due in 30. Open up the properties for this box. Let's change the name due in 30. The control source, let's get rid of that. We're going to put something in there in a second. Get rid of the format, make that currency. Okay, now control source, I'm going to shift F2 to zoom in. I find it easier to work in this unless you need the IntelliSense because you don't get IntelliSense in the zoom window. But that's what that's why I like to go in the table first and take a look and see what okay. So this is gonna be D sum. What field are we summing up? Amount due. And I can't type today. <laughs> From the bill table. Where is null paid date and due date is less than date plus 30. 
And in here, you do not need the square brackets because this is going to the D sub function. All right, hit OK. Save it, close it, open it, and there we go. We got $100 due in 30 days. Now, if we were to go back into here and mark this guy not paid, let's just get rid of this. All right, close it. Now, this isn't going to automatically refresh on its own. You can make a refresh button with a little VBA, or you can just hit F5 and it'll refresh. All right, but now you can see that it's updated. We got $2,100 due in 30 days. There's also a refresh button up on the ribbon here, right there, refresh, boop, or refresh all, boop. Okay, what if we wanna do the same thing for a particular customer? If you open up a customer, you wanna see how much you got due to them. I do the same thing with accounts receivable, right? I have unpaid how, much, how many invoices this customer has that they owe us, but you can go the same way too with payees, right? Just borrow this box, let's copy this, and let's go back to the customer form, here it is, design view. And let's just paste that in here, Boop. slide it down. All right, let's use a little format painter, do in 30, slide you over like so. And now we just gotta make one little modification to this guy, all right? It's all the same stuff, but we need one more criteria. Can you think of what that might be? Or better yet, in fact, for this guy, you might want to even get rid of the due date and just see how much this guy owes you. Maybe that's past due, right? Where the due date is less than today's date. So they owe you this money and it's, it's past due. But here you have to add and the customer ID equals the current customer. So I'm gonna go outside the quotes and go and customer ID. That'll throw the ID into there and concatenate it with the string, right? So you get customer ID equals one, all right? Hit OK, and I'm gonna change this label here to say past due, past due. And we might as well change the name of the box too, right? Uh, click, click, past due. Save it, close it, and you can put all kinds of stuff on the main menu too. I used to have due in 30, due in seven, past due up here. So then I knew, hey, I gotta get on the phone and start making some phone calls with some deadbeats. Well, that was, that was for accounts receivable. I gotta be, I gotta know who I have to hide from because I'm a deadbeat. <laughs> no, I've, <clears throat> I've always paid every one of my bills precisely on time. <laughs> All right, so save it, close it, uh, main menu. Let's see who, who owes us money, payables. All right, so I am the one that owes money and let's make it past due. So let's come in here and go, it was due on 515. All right, close it, let's open up me. And pass due, 100 bucks. All right, that was correct. Yep. Now let's say Jean Luc is past due. Well, let's say Jean Luc is not past due. So he technically doesn't owe that 2000 yet. Let's go and find Jean Luc. Go here. Where are you, Jean Luc? And there we go. Oh, 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 what's going on here? Why am I seeing $100? Let's take a look. What did I do? Okay, this is very interesting. I'm glad I caught this. Here's the problem. I'm just gonna tell you what I did because you're gonna run into this eventually, but maybe not today. Now, we're dealing with the bill table, okay? And I'm saying in the bill table, I wanna see where the customer ID equals whatever number we're on, one, four, six, whatever. Okay, that's fine, but let's take a look at the bill table the bill table doesn't have a customer ID. The bill table has a payee ID. So this is one of the issues you have to be careful of if you're going to name a field differently, right? In our bill table, it's called payee-t or payee ID, but this basically represents a customer. So make sure in your formulas that you adjust accordingly. This has to be payee ID equals whatever customer ID you're on. Okay, and you run into the same thing. If you've got a vendor table, employee table, you know, they're all stored in your person T, but they're considered vendors or employees or whatever, you run into that. And if the field is unknown, you'll, you might get whatever random data back. But now you can see, there we go. Okay, and you might not want a blank 
uh, field there, so we can always wrap that in NZ if there are no records. All right, give me a zero. Hit OK, save it, close it, open it, and there we go. Pretty cool stuff, huh? All right, so tomorrow we're going to start attacking our accounts payable report. We're going to do a little aged report and see who owes us money in 30 days, who owes us money now, right? Who's past due? Who do I got to sick the collection agency on? That kind of stuff. So tune in tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Or members, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording today. So that's going to do it for part three. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part four. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.